Yo, 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 yo. What's good with it, man? It's the homie Mac. Music, art, culture, knowledge. Reporting live for the Dogon. Dogon, Dogon, Dogon. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, 82 Kings. It's your homie Mac, man. Um, yeah, it's finals week. This week has been kind of crazy between, uh, you know, school, work, um, everything of that nature. Um, recently, damn, my phone is tripping. Um, yeah, this is a session of Mac Minutes. Excuse me, my phone is acting funny. Um, this is a session of Mac Minutes. And um, I had a conversation with an attorney, a black, a black woman who's an attorney. And um, she was telling me, essentially, the uh, the sentiment that she was feeling, I guess the current zeitgeist that she's been, been feeling, uh, for I guess over the past year or so, um, is that essentially the, the conservatives, the right-wingers, they want to act as if racism doesn't actually exist and that racism is basically something that is created a, a, a liberal agenda, agenda of the left wing. Um, she feels like, you know, people have acted as if, um, sp again, specifically people on the right wing, they have act like racism has no merit that it's just a hashtag, that it's not really going on, systemic oppression is not real. This is just the liberals liberal the liberal left wing agenda's uh propaganda machine. You know, that it's something that fuels cancel culture. Uh you know, and, and, and my thing is, you know, the thing with me is there is a litany, a mountain of information that speaks to the fact that racism is something that subsisted that was a social reality prior to Trump's campaign, try, prior to cancel culture, prior to the, the current ethos that we have in our society within the past five to 10, 20 years. Uh, black people have been at a, have been in um, a perpetual mortal uh, conflict with racism. And uh I know some people act as though uh you know racism doesn't racism uh is holding us back. It's all about uh black accountability and that uh you know black people are using white supremacy as if it's like uh you know like this crutch to justify their failures. Um to they, they want to blame you know when uh, when in doubt blame the white supremacists. Uh when in doubt play the race card. And my my thing is, from from the time we got off the boat, from the transatlantic slave trade, um, black people, African Americans, um, we had our manhood take, taken away from us, our womanhood taken away from us, our concept of self. We were basically, uh, I think somebody somebody had told me a long time ago. A, a nigga is someone who has no knowledge of self. A nigga is someone who has no concept of self. A nigga is someone who blindly follows things, doesn't critically think. And this same, ver this, this very same person that told me that told me that the white man's greatest creation was the nigga. The nigga has no concept of self. Uh, the nigga has no sense of self. No, uh, no underlying culture. Um, and. Since we got off the boat, since we got here, I mean, I know you got some brothers who say we were already here, but I, but I want to speak from transatlantic slave trade till now. Um, our cold concept of self was usurped from us. And I know one of the things that Dr. Khaled Muhammad used to say, RIP, was uh, the best way to fight an alien culture is to embrace your own. And unfortunately, um, a lot of my people, we have this suicidal love affair with, with, with Eurocentrism. Um, but that's a whole nother conversation. Racism, it exists. What is racism? Racism essentially is, um, at, at, 
at its core, it's the belief that your race is superior. But it goes beyond that because it's about power. Racism is about power. Being able to start with the premise that your race is supreme or better. And you use that center point to subjugate all people that are not your race. So it's about numbers and power, economic power, political power, having a social infrastructure so you can affect the social and political realities of, in this case, non-whites. Um, racism. <laughs> you know, um, you know one, one of the things that I really wish a lot of people would understand, black people have been running this race with our arms tied behind our back, with no shoes on, blindfolded, <laughs> you know, with a torn ACL. We've been running this race. Um, and the thing is, I'm for black accountability. I'm for black people uh, having knowledge of self. I'm for black people um, doing better, you know? But I guess what really just vexes my soul is people want to act as if we weren't purposefully held back, you know? And, like, I would say... From what, Reconstruction to Jim Crow, Fragrancy Laws, Civil Rights Era. Um, we've been trying to catch up. We, were, we I mean, white people had a 500-year, four, four or 500-year head start where they were able to um, pretty much create the, 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 the economic and the social and the political landscape of this country. Um, I, and I feel like over the past maybe, maybe 200 years or so, um, we have, well, hold that thought. We haven't even been out of slavery longer than we were in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's still, um, what did Dr. Khaled Muhammad say? You know, a lot of us have lost our, our sense of self and our minds. Um, and when I talk about white supremacy or confronting racism, I think one dynamic that is often overlooked is the psychological effect. One book I feel as though all black people should read Um and anyone who considers himself an ally of melanated black people, African Americans, um, one book they should read is um, what is that book? Uh, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome by Dr. Joy. Uh, I always mess up her last name. I apologize. I don't want to butcher her last name again. But Dr. Joy, uh, beautiful book. She outlines um, the MAFA. M A A F A. Google that MAFA. She outlines the MAFA, which is pretty much everything that we've been through as a race. Uh, since we got here and up until now to this point, um, the, the one thing I think that I'm really starting to notice now is uh, the, the in hindsight, looking at the dynamics of racism and how it's had an effect on my mind. You know, I've always, uh, well not always, I, I feel like my parents gave me, I've always... How do I say it? I've always felt the pain, but I didn't always necessarily know what to direct it to or where it even stemmed from. Um, I guess what, what, were the, what was the, 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 the progenitor to this pain? And a lot of it was just self-esteem. You know, defining myself in proximity to whiteness. Um, again, um, embracing an alien culture. You know, um, if it's white, it's right. If it's black, get back. You know? That that duality, that not duality, that um, that dichotomy, um, has played a, a major role in my mind, you know, and me I realizing, you know, my parents teaching me to have a love for self, uh, me really digging into history books, me trying to understand, you know, what created the social realities that exist today, it has given me uh, a compass, and I have a better understanding of self. Um, and what I need to do, <coughs> excuse me, um, and all the, <coughs> all the information I have, the knowledge that I've uh, obtained, the research I've done, I've tried my best to highlight these social realities and why they exist, why black people are in the hell that we're in, and I try to share this information, I try to take this information to be my best self, I use it to be my best self, and I try to help as many brothers and sisters that want to help. I try to help people that consider themselves allies and give give them a framework as well. 
Um, but yeah, I uh, I just think it's bogus, it's blasphemous to say that racism isn't real. It, it's, it's blasphemous to say that racism is a liberal agenda. Um, there are economic, social, and political realities that, that speak to the contrary, that, that, that are outlined from, from uh, again, vagrancy laws, Jim Crow laws, um, black people not um, being made privy to, to home ownership, home loans. Um, you know, people, basically our blackness being used as a metric to not have access to the American dream. Or to fight like hell to get it, and that's the thing. People keep, up, keep people keep saying, "Well, if you just work harder," but it's like I shouldn't have to jump over bridges to get basic fundamental stuff. You know, the, the basic um, thing is about to come down. Don't come down, Bruce Lee. Um, you know, this is at the end of the day. I need people to acknowledge the fact that this country was designed. Uh, with the white male hegemonic, with the wealthy white male hegemonic premise, this was this this country was created with the premise of white men owning land, having an having an astronomical amount of wealth, um, and to subjugate all non-whites. Um, and I, I guess my thing is, I think it's bogus how many people just ignore history ignore history and just think that black people are just making this stuff up um yeah this is a session of mac minutes um racism is not a liberal agenda it's, it's a social and political reality um you know like the children of israel uh, i think when in the bible that that journey was supposed to take maybe like a week was it but it ended up taking like years you know, and there are so many things that the children of Israel had incurred. And I feel like metaphorically speaking, that's us. us black, I mean, some people will say it was literally us. Depends on who you ask. But I use that, you know, the, the journey of the children of Israel as a, as a reference point, as an analogy. You know, all things considered, in 2021, to be a black person, um, there are a lot of mindsets that our, 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 our progenitors taught us, parents. Um, and they were mistaught. And there's a lot of thinking that needs to be unlearned. There's a lot of new thinking, um, you know, as far as education, as far as uh, political realities, as far as economics. There's a lot of new things that I feel like are being taught, and I feel like we are doing better. You know, but, but yeah, again, just to, to be in your right mind as a black person in 2021, to be sane is a blessing in itself. Because, uh, again, the mafia is real. We're still in the midst of it. Um, yeah, it's the homie Mac, music art, culture, knowledge, reporting live from the Dogon, each one teach one, peace and love, signing out from the Dogon, session of Mac Minutes, I'm out.